In this video, I will show you how to apply the Wales Woods model to a problem in the real world. This photo shows a tire pump being used to inflate a mountain bike tire. The problem is that this pump takes too many strokes. Thus, the goal is to design a bike pump that inflates the tire in 20 strokes. To apply the model, inquire about the physics. What is going on? What are the scientific concepts? What are the physics? Well, every time we push the pump down, all the air in the cylinder goes into the tire. So, 20 units of air are needed to fill the tire. This sounds like conservation of mass. Also, we know that air can be modeled as an ideal gas. Next, inquire about how you can idealize or simplify the problem. What assumptions can I make? What is the essence? What's the simplest way I can represent this problem? This shows my idealization. The pump is a piston and cylinder. The tire is a volume that holds air. The check valve allows air to flow into the tire but prevents air from leaving the tire. Next, start documentation by doing problem formulation. Step 1 label the task along the, to the top. Step 2. Define the situation. That is, describe how you are idealizing this problem. Step 3. State the goal. To do task labeling, document four things. A. A title. B. Your initials. C. The date. And D. Page numbers. To define the situation, do three things. A. Summarize the problem in a brief statement. B. Sketch a situation diagram. C. State assumptions. To state the goal, write down a symbol. Write down units. Give a brief description. Now we are done with problem formulation. The next step is to ask the question, what equation has my goal in it? The goal is volume of the pump right here. Oh, ideal gas law has that in. PV is equal to MRT. Now we have a way to get started. I've written the ideal gas law. PV is equal to MRT. And uh, let's look at this. All right, there's volume of my pump. So I have my goal in the equation. Before the air is compressed, the pressure of the air is atmospheric. So this value is known. It's 1 atmosphere or 101.3 kPa. The gas constant for air can be looked up. So it's known. And the uh, temperature of the air is 20 degrees C or 293 Kelvin. So that's known but we don't know the mass of air in the pump. And if we can figure this out, then we are done. We can go ahead and calculate the volume of our, our pump. And let's try conservation of mass to solve for this variable. Conservation of mass says that 20 times the mass of air inside the pump cylinder is equal to the mass of air in the tire. Excellent. Here's my goal. but I don't know the mass of air inside the tire. But oh, the ideal gas law would contain this variable. Let's try ideal gas law now applied to the tire. I've written ideal gas law for the tire. This is our new goal, the mass of air in the tire. And there's our new goal. The gas constant would be known. The temperature is known. We've got an estimate of the volume of the tire in the problem situation and we know the pressure in the tire. So we're all done. And if we look at this collectively, we have one, two, three equations and one, two, three unknowns. Problem is cracked. We can solve for our goal. What you want to notice here is we're solving the problem by applying physical laws, ideal gas law, conservation of mass, and ideal gas law again. The next step in the model is to make a plan. 
we ask the question, what is the easiest way to perform the calculations? Looking at this, we see that the easiest way, or step one, right here, is to use this equation to solve for this unknown. Once we know that, we can go into this equation and solve for the mass of air in the pump. That's step two of our plan. Then we can put the mass of air in the pump into the ideal gas law here and solve for the problem goal. So this is step three of the plan. So step one, step two, step three. Let's go ahead and move on to take action. When we take action, we execute the plan. Step one, the mass of air in the tire is about 16 and a half grams. Step two, the mass of air in the pump is about eight tenths of a gram. Step three, the required volume is pretty close to three quarters of a liter. When we review a solution, we validate our solution, we make inferences, and we learn. You can read through the details. I hope you've enjoyed this example, and we'll catch you on the next example.